Okay, Mayor, we're ready to start our meeting. Okay, thank you, Susan. I certainly want to welcome everyone to the Benton Town Council meeting on well, this uh, beautiful day here in Benton, uh, June 2nd, 2020. And as always, we'll ask Susan to get things started with the roll call and the, uh, the uh, confirmation that we have to read. If you would, please, Susan. Okay, Council Roll Call, Council Member McCarty. Here. Council Member Scheid. Here. Council Member Stovall. Here. Vice Mayor Lyles. Here. Mayor Gross. Here. We do Thank have you. a quorum of council. Town staff that are present, Barry Thompson, Susan Johnson, Pete Peters, Chastity Barber, Ann Cantrell, and Donna Collins. Also present is Jeremy Carroll, our town attorney, and Debbie Adams with the Venton Messenger. I would like to confirm that our meeting is being held in accordance with town ordinance number 1016 and amendment 28 to House Bill 29 adopted at the 2020 reconvened session of the Virginia General Assembly and everyone present is participating by electronic means. Mayor, meeting yours. All right, thank you, Susan, very much. Um, in just a minute, I'll ask you to stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we use a moment of silence here at the uh, town council meeting, meeting so that everyone has an opportunity to pray as they see fit. If you do pray, and I hope you will, I certainly plan to, I would ask you to keep this country this community and this council meeting in your thoughts and prayers, and most especially this uh, country. We uh, certainly need all the prayers we can get uh, about now. But while we're standing, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, as tradition here in Vinton, our vice mayor will uh, lead us in that. And uh, I will uh, close the uh, moment of silence, vice mayor, so that you will know when to start, okay? And for your standing, please. Okay, we're going to put up the uh, flag. All right. Was that muted, Susan? Susan, was that unmuted? Now it is. Do it it. That's fine. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the, flag the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And to, and to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, thank you folks for that. Uh, and with that, we will move on to uh, the next item, which is uh, the request to postpone uh, add or change the agenda. Are there any requests? Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to upcoming events. And uh, I tell you, um, Council Member McCarty usually does this. I didn't know if you had anything you needed to announce tonight or not, Sabrina. I didn't hear anything. Did you guys? 
I'm not sure that she was able to sign on. Sorry, I did. I got in. I was muted there. No, sir, we don't have any announcements. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, we're getting the hang of the Zoom thing, but it still gets a little crazy sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will move on to the uh, awards and presentations uh, and proclamations. Uh, at the last couple of weeks, uh, for this time period, uh, we had only one uh, proclamation. You, you will see that listed on the agenda there. It's a National Safety Month uh, for the month of June. Next item is uh, citizens' comments and petitions. Susan, have you received anything uh, prior to the meeting? Um only one, but it is something that's already on the agenda. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Uh, with that then, we will move on to the public hearings for this evening. The first public hearing uh, is to uh, take comments uh, concerning the proposed 2020-2021 Town of Benton budget. So I will officially open the public hearing and we'll start with the uh, report from uh, Mrs. Cantrell. After that, we will ask for public comments and any discussion that council might want to have this evening. So, uh, Anne, if you would please. Sure. Um, thank you, Manager, and uh, excuse me, Mayor and Town Council, for the opportunity to present this to you tonight. So, we do have a public hearing. And I'm sorry if you've seen this several times. Um, I know it gets a bit repetitive, but we're going to try to breeze through it here tonight. And I'm missing one screen. Sorry, I have three screens going right now. It's kind of unique for me. Here we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this slide represents our total budget across the town of Inton by fund. And you can see here that we have a total decrease in that bottom right hand corner of 4.51%. The capital fund represents the largest decrease next year with a 65% decrease, which is followed by the general fund with a decrease of 4.77%. The grant fund has no change from last year, and then the utility fund contains an increase of 2.79%, and the stormwater fund contains an increase of 6.41%. The preparation of this fiscal year 2021 budget was drastically different from the budgets prepared in the past. Despite this circumstance, town management did its best to hold the five core budget principles for the town. That includes quality of life for residents, quality of services provided, continual evaluation of service costs, basically asking, are we being efficient with our funding? Effective replacement of equipment and vehicles, and to identify and apply for alternative revenue sources or grant funding. Some of the highlights or a short summary of what the fiscal year 2021 budget include is freezing of three and a half positions and elimination of one position. The town is utilizing vacant positions to accomplish the reduction and because of this, no employee will have to be terminated or let go. All current employees will remain employed. The capital fund expenditures have been reduced to minimum. Due to increase in benefit costs, the town is proposing to reduce travel, training, and employee events to offset some of those higher costs. Although the decisions are not ideal, the staff was able to balance the budget without use of fund balance or any proposed increases in tax rates. This graph represents the revenue sources for the general fund. As you can see with the orange bar, other local taxes represents the largest source of income for the town of Vinton. And this was also the most susceptible to economic changes, such as what we're seeing with COVID-19. This category is made up of meals tax, business license, communication sales and use tax, paramutual tax, and other miscellaneous taxes. The next largest source of revenue is categorical aid, this is made up of funding for highway street maintenance. After that is sales tax, which is based on a percentage of local funding received by Roanoke County, general property taxes, including real estate, public service corporation, and personal property taxes. And the miscellaneous revenue includes funding from rental income, intergovernmental revenues, interest, and other sources. 
And lastly, the non-categorical aid includes funding from the state for the PPTRA and the House Bill 599 funding for the police department. And this graph here is an item that Manager Thompson wanted us to make sure we highlight in our budget presentation. This shows revenue generated by commercial sources in the town of Vinton. So you can see here that revenue from commercial sources is a good percentage of our budget at almost 60%. And is the largest source of this revenue comes from our restaurants with prepared food tax. As you can see on this slide, the utility fund is almost 100% funded by operating revenues. That consists of water and sewer billing to our customers. As part of the Davenport and Company Rate Study, Council adopted a resolution last fall that would increase rates 8% on the service charge and 6% on the volumetric rate each July 1st until fiscal year 2023. This includes this year, which is accounting for the roughly 2% increase in revenue for the utility fund in this budget. This increase was proposed by the rate study to assist in funding major capital improvements needed across the system. Due to revenue loss, we are evaluating with Davenport and Company if the rate structure proposed can still support the improvements that we want to do for our system. This slide is showing the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget by department. As in the past, public safety is the largest expenditure for the town. This includes our police department, animal control, and a portion of the Roanoke County E911 Center. The second largest expenditure is the public works department. This includes key items such as highway maintenance, traffic lights and signals, snow removal, refuse collection, recycling, and building and grounds. You can also see the other town expenditures on this graph, such as administration, special programs, community and economic development, performance agreements, retiree insurance, travel and training, and fund transfers. So to balance the 4.5% decrease in revenue, the first step the staff took was to delay the capital improvement program and to remove any operating budget increases for the next year. After those steps were taken, there was still a significant shortfall to balance the gap between revenue available and planned expenditure. To balance, town management had the task of choosing between a list of pretty tough options. The reductions for the proposed budget as advertised include, included freezing a meter reader position that would move to the finance department, freezing a vacant highway streets laborer position, freezing an officer position that was restored last year, and eliminating a recycling position by restructuring the bulk service. And it also includes freezing the assistant town manager position for half the year, coinciding with the retirement of the town manager. We also look to reduce staff oversight for some of our events by consolidating programs to certain days a week. And we also reduce budget for employee events and training. We move the July 4th fireworks costs to non-departmental account. And we consolidated all the travel and training budgets into one line item for the town and roughly decreased all of those accounts by $11,500. The total personnel operating and capital reductions balanced the $263,000 gap and it allowed the town not to raise taxes or use fund balance. So quite a few things went into this budget next year to make it balanced. The breakout of the positions is included in this table with administration at three, finance at five, HR at one, planning and zoning at three, the police department at 26, the public works department at 30, the war memorial at three, and then the total is 71. And so, sorry for that last flip there, but we actually are consolidating our war memorial into a community program that includes senior and the war memorial for the whole package that we offer. And then the one thing that we did want to make you aware of is that 26 positions in the police department does include one position that is fully grant funded by the DMV task force grant from the state. Unfortunately, the CIP is much different than we originally planned. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the town had identified to fund $370,000 per year in capital replacement. After revenue losses became apparent, staff removed everything except for this $175,000 match for the Mountain View Road grant. 
should revenues improve during the budget year, the original plan, and actually we're in the final document, we're gonna include an amended plan has been included for council as a resource for possible appropriation during the year. Now shown is the debt summary for the town of Benton. The good news is the last payment to the county for the Benton Library will be paid on July 1st, 2020. So that means that this proposed budget is the last one with this payment. The town will not see the maturity of major payments until 2024 or 2025. At that time, several large balances will be paid. The total debt payment for the general fund is 500,000 with the library payment included in an economic development account instead of a debt retirement account. The total debt payment for the utility fund is 770,000 and the stormwater debt payment is at 38,000. And then the one thing we wanted to highlight for you is the total outstanding debt owed principal balance across all of our funds is 7.8 million. On this chart, we're displaying a high level look at the breakdown between all the funds and the expenditure categories. So we wanted to give you a high level of what is the town spending its money on. At the end, we include a percentage of the total budget and you can clearly see the largest expenditure for the town across all the funds is in its personnel at 43%. One other thing that we wanted to show you is operating closely follows at 29% and then actually capital this year has dramatically decreased into that 8% of our total budget. That is at 10, transfers between funds is at five and then a contingency which is in the utility fund only is at 1%. And we also wanted to show you the same information, but in a chart form, so you visually can see how is the town investing its money. And you can easily see here that personnel is where the town's investing most of its money, closely followed by its operating expenditures. As part of the budget process, we wanna take a look at our fund balance and explain what our legal requirements are. The town has a healthy balance at 2.9 million at the last audit. And based on our current projections, we may use a little bit more, a little bit less, but about 103,000. And this is something that is allowed in our policy for economic loss. The projected ending balance after that dip would be about 2.8 million. Our legal requirement is to maintain a 60 day balance, which is based on the fiscal year 2021 budget would be 1.2 million. You can actually see that figure right there on that sheet, the 1,194. However, we do wanna make you aware that the town typically uses about 1.3 million in working capital, which allows us to pay employees and pay vendors during times that we are not collecting many revenues, such as the fall and winter. The town adopted a formal general fund policy, which was revised in 2017 and it's included in the appendix of your proposed budget document. And the one thing I do wanna note for you here is interest income on this fund balance for the general fund was $48,820.06 as of June 30th, 2019. And that actually is included in our revenue budget and we use that to meet or balance our budget each year. And so we do have one more review at the finance committee next week. And then the week following that is the final adoption of the 2021 budget. And then lastly, we did wanna go over with you some recommended changes from how the budget was advertised. After last briefing, we came back and we heard a lot of the comments that you said, and we are proposing to eliminate one refuse collection position and reduce the refuse budget by $40,000. To do that, we would like to unfreeze one vacant highway street crew position and increase the various works department accounts for that person moving into that position. We revised the CIP multi-year plan in the proposed budget document to remove the 175,000 that is funded. And we did add 145,000 to that of what we would like to have as a contingency should the project come in over budget. And then we also reviewed the CIP multi-year plan to move the Clearview Hardy Road from year eight to year one. 
And that is my presentation tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. And thank you very much for that presentation. And I don't know who uh, takes that off the screen. Of course, I don't know. We might have been better off with the other screen. <laughs> no, you guys look great. Some of us. <laughs> Thank you uh, for that presentation and uh, uh, several important things uh, mentioned there. We'll uh, discuss in just a second, but. Uh, the second part of this hearing would be to ask for public comment. So, uh, Susan, have you received any comments? Uh, yes, Mayor. I received one call in comment yesterday from Linda Short of 626 East Augusta Avenue in Benton. She called and commented that she would rather see the bulk pickup continue each week and eliminate the recycling because she felt that more citizens use the bulk pickup. And that's for the record. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, if that's all the public comments, then we'll move to council discussion and questions. Council, you have anything you'd like to discuss tonight? <clears throat> just, um, Mayor, just on that public comment, um, the bulk pickup is is just temporary, correct? Well, we hope so until, uh, if and until uh, revenues increase. I do think personally, I, I think the public comment was very valid. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that's something we're gonna have to watch closely. And uh, my, my hopes is that uh, if our, our revenues return to normal, that's something we can take a look at. Uh, yes. You know, because we, uh, <laughs> uh, we have reputation for uh, being a clean, uh, tidy town, and we certainly don't want to lose that reputation. And so it's something we're going to have to watch closely and see how this schedule works. Well, I, I listen, Mayor, I agree with you 100%. Um, and Vice Mayor, I think that everything that we are experiencing right now under the pandemic COVID-19 is temporary. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, it's temporary because we were forced to make some changes. And um, once we get back up and running, uh, Vice Mayor, to your point, yes. I mean, you know, we, it's, that's one of the things that Benton is, is known for is their services. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Vice Mayor, to the fact of leaving that open to the fact that once we get back and get rolling, that, you know, it, it, can, it could actually become te not temporary, but back to permanent like it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly an important service and the one that I think we'll have to monitor uh, closely, but uh, uh, probably an appropriate, well, definitely an appropriate move this time, I think. Any other comments or questions? I do have a question um, for the um, finance director on the, on the position with the police department that is grant funded, 100% uh, grant funded. How long will that position be grant funded um, before the town decides, before we have to make a decision that that, that, that position goes back into our operating budget? I don't know if I have the answer that you wanna hear. Um, originally it was supposed to be for five years and that was in 2016. So that would get us through this, this budget right here. And actually I think the way that the federal one works, it would actually get us into three months of another budget because they go through September 30th. But um, we have had some pushback over the last year. It was difficult to um, get the funding secured in this fiscal year. And I think the police department is working to try to get that figured out now. Obviously, that grant is not functioning during COVID. They can't make stops or, or do some of the things that they were doing before. So I think that position is actually vacant right now, will not be filled. Until oh, okay. Got it. That we Got have it. funding. Got it. Okay. All right. Right. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention uh, that uh, Ann touched on earlier. Uh, she uh, 
said to win. I've seen the budget a couple of times, and she's right. Uh, we we've, we've gone through this uh, several times, and uh, and uh, obviously we'll get to see it once more before we vote on it, or actually when we vote at the next meeting. Uh, but I wouldn't want anyone to think that this is something that we just brush over in a few minutes at this particular meeting, but it's gone through committees and uh, a lot of study. And in fact, our <laughs> budget process is just about a, a year round process anymore. So uh, this is just uh, kind of the final uh, few procedures that we need to go through. So. All right, if there's uh, no further discussion, I will formally close uh, that uh, uh, public hearing and we'll move on to the next one. Uh, this public hearing is uh, in regards to uh, Town of Vincent's intention to apply for a community <laughs> development block grant uh, fund uh, for a local project to support uh, what's in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we'll follow our normal procedure. So I will officially open the public hearing and we'll start with the report from staff. Uh, I understand Mr. Peters is going to do this one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, yes, I'll have to make a few brief comments on our intention to apply for a CDBG grant. Um, early in April, the Department of Housing uh, and Community Development uh, uh, appropriated about six and a half million dollars towards um, uh, local governments uh, to uh, address health and economic uh, conditions um, that were um, worsened because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so there are several project, uh, projects that the town can consider. Uh, we have been looking at those different avenues um, in ways that we could respond and do something for our local economy. Um, and we have identified a project and we will share more details about that project at our next public hearing uh, scheduled for June 16th. Uh, but the intent of tonight's public hearing is just to solicit comments from the public uh, on the town's intention to apply as, as, as a general application. And the next public hearing, we'll get into specific details about what our application may include. Uh, with that being said, I will be happy to take any questions that any council members might have. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Pete, for that report. Susan, have you received any uh, public comments about this? No public comments received on this public hearing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council, any discussion or questions for Pete? Okay, hearing none, we will officially close that public hearing and uh, move on to the other items. Uh, I understand that both of these items that we've talked about in public hearing tonight will be on our next uh, council agenda for June 16th. And of course, we'll be taking action at that time. I uh, don't see anything listed for the town attorney, but uh, always good to see you, Jeremy. Glad you're here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And with that, we'll move on to the town manager section. Mr. Thompson, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have no briefings tonight, uh, so we'll move on to our items requiring action. Uh, the first item is uh, the consideration for adoption of a resolution to approve uh, the updated Benton Farmers Market Policy and Procedures. So I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Chastity Barber. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Gross. How are you doing? Doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Afternoon, members of council. How are y'all doing? Good to see you all. Good. I come before you tonight just to review the farmer's market policy and the rate fee structure. Um, and then I know last council meeting, y'all got to see the branding on the uh, PowerPoints. Council last adopted the business farmer's market policy in 2014 and defined the sale of locally grown and Virginia grown produce, products, and hours of operation and rental fees. My goal tonight is just to highlight a few of the revisions to the policy. First of all, we have removed the rental fees from the policy and added them to the TOV annual budget document within the TOV taxes, license, and fee schedule to go along with the War Memorial and the Community Center. Our hours of operation will be for the 2020-2021 season, Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday, 9 to 2. 
The market will be open April through October with the hopes of reopening November and part of December to sell Christmas trees. The new rental fee schedule daily will be $10, monthly $240, and a special event, which will be $50 daily within just the farmer's market area. The new rental fee will allow us to increase or decrease the rentals if needed from season to season and based on supply and demand. It will also keep us aligned with the other structures that are in the book already, in the budget book. I, um, I think that's all I have right now, actually. If y'all have any questions, feel free. Hey, Chastity, I do have a question. Um, I've been able to go down to the farmer's market several times lately and get some fresh produce, and they've got beautiful flowers and everything down there. So um, kudos for that. I was just wondering, is there any other vendors that have maybe contacted you about a space down there? Because um, I know that times are different right now. So, um, but, you know, that one vendor is always there, which we very much appreciate. But I just didn't know if it was going to, if you had anybody contact you about maybe expanding the vendors. So before COVID-19, we probably, I would say I was on track for Saturday vendors to have at least up to 10 which would have been amazing because last year, I think max, I had five or six on Saturdays and that seems to bring in the most vendors on that day. When COVID-19 started, um, the farmer's market all over in the state of Virginia shut down. So we just got um, the okay to open up a couple weeks ago and they had just asked us to keep it to try to keep it to one vendor unless we could space it out and they needed 20 feet between each vendor. So uh -huh. I just wanted to keep Gabby there for produce and just be able to offer that before we start bringing in craft vendors um, and arts. And so as of today, bring on phase two, we can, um, I can start emailing some more vendors and seeing if they want to come down. Um, I have a farmer's market Zoom on Thursday that is just with the market managers in the state of Virginia, and that'll give us more detail. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I think the farmer's market looks great down there with all of the, everything that's going on. And since we've had COVID hit and it's changed our lives in a lot of different ways. Um, I think it's so wow. nice to be able to go down there and um, see a little activity. So I'm looking forward to, uh, and I'm sure you'll do an awesome job of filling those spaces when you can. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be ready to open it up soon. Yep. Cool. All right. Sounds like good news to me. Sounds like great news, as a matter of fact. Okay, uh, folks, you have before you. <coughs> resolution that would uh, approve the updated uh, Vento Farmers Market Policy and Procedures. Uh, you've heard the presentation. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept. I'll second. You. Okay. Uh, I believe that motion was made by Council Member McCarty, second by Vice Mayor Riles. Susan, please call the roll. Council Member McCarty. Yes. Council Member Shad. Council Member Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor Lyles? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. All right, resolution passes. So, uh, Mr. So. Manager, back to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the second item is to consider adoption of a resolution authorizing the renewal of the town event and employees group health insurance coverage uh, with the local choice program for the contract year by the first. 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Um, several uh, council meetings ago, uh, council was uh, briefed on uh, the renewal. And just to summarize, uh, the insurance premiums received a 4.8% uh, renewal increase uh, effective with the renewal uh, of July the 1st, 2020. Um, we uh, had offered um, uh, in previous years the 500 plan and the key advantage of uh, uh, 1,000, uh, I'm sorry, the 250 plan and the key advantage 1,000. Uh, moving forward with this renewal, we will change to the 500 plan and the key advantage 1,000. Um, and uh, council was gracious enough to absorb the health insurance increase uh, in the upcoming budget. Uh, will keep the employee premiums at the same level. 
So with this resolution, um, the uh, it's, the town is required to submit a renewal acceptance to the Virginia Department of Human Resource Management. And I just would like to point out that the town uh, has been with the local choice health benefit program since July the 1st, 1990. So um, there is a resolution for your consideration. So. Okay, thank you, sir, for that report. Uh, council, any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Sorry. I'll second it. Okay. Well, Vice Mayor, were you the one who made the motion? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Mayor. Okay. So, motion by Vice Mayor Laws, second by Council Member Stovall. I think that's what I heard. <laughs> Susan, please call the roll. Council Member McCarty? Yes. Council Member Shad? Council Member Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor Laws? Yes. Mayor Grace? Yes. Resolution passes. Thank you, Council. Mr. Major, you have anything further to see me? Uh, yes, I would like to apprise Council of our um, reopening plan uh, to the public for the municipal building. Uh, and um, we um, met with Service Pro uh, today, and uh, we plan to do a deep cleaning of uh, all of our buildings. Um, and uh, uh, that will take place on uh, the uh, 18th and 19th of June, and uh, we plan to open uh, the building back up to the public on June the 22nd. Um, and we feel like that that deep cleaning of the building is very important uh, for uh, the safety and health of uh, the public when they come back into the building. Um, so um, we had we were shooting for June 8th uh, for that, but we could not get on Service Pro's uh, schedule uh, before the um, 18th and 19th of June. So uh, it looks like that uh, that will be the a target date uh, now. So, um, and uh, we are uh, working on our policies for reopening. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, so we uh, will finalize those and we'll be sharing those with council uh, in the next week. Uh, so uh, just wanted to apprise you of that. So. Um, uh, then, uh, uh, we also, uh, have received, um, our information on the CARES Act, uh, and the money that the town will receive, uh, uh, or the allocation that the uh, town will receive on the CARES Act, uh, will flow through Roanoke County, uh, the state uh, allocations uh, went to the counties and uh, the towns will receive an equitable share of uh, those monies. And so um, uh, we are, have been in communication with the county. Um, the actual uh, use of that money has kind of been vague. Uh, and so we're all trying to figure out exactly uh, what that uh, money can be used for. Uh, we do understand that it uh, cannot be used for revenue replacement, uh, which that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, uh, we uh, will be, uh, you know, working out a plan on uh, how we can utilize uh, the money uh, uh, that we receive uh, for that, uh, uh, for the betterment of the town uh, and uh, our businesses and the citizens of the town. So uh, you know, once we have a better handle on that, we will uh, share that with uh, council also. And um, I believe Mr. Peters uh, would like to make some comments on uh, e-bikes. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Peters. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, just a quick couple of comments uh, regarding some legislation that will take effect uh, July 1st. Um, this is regarding um, e-bikes. Um, the General Assembly has redefined uh, electric powered bikes, um, allowing them to be treated uh, as a regular pedal powered bike. Um, so this does affect how it would affect the town in the sense of being able to use e-bikes on greenways. Uh, in some cases, uh, in a lot of jurisdictions, uh, motorized vehicles are not permitted on greenways or trails 
and now the e-bikes will no longer be considered um, motorized vehicle. Um, it would act, you know, change how um, we look at e-bikes in the valley, uh, in particular on a greenway. So um, we uh, there's there's some, and I won't get into the specifics of the legislation at this point, um, but it, it in essence it breaks uh, e-bikes down into three classes. Uh, class one, class two, and class three, and it does treat them as uh, normal pedal power, powered bikes. Um, we can take action in the future. Uh, we must have a public hearing. Uh, we could take action if we chose to do so to uh, prohibit e-bikes from our um, improved surface trails or greenways. Uh, however, uh, staff uh, and, and a few members of council have discussed this. Uh, we've had consultation with um, the Greenway Commission and the town, uh, the staff recommends, uh, at least at this point, to wait and see how Roanoke City and Roanoke County tend to uh, intend to address this new legislation. They have a much larger linear um, mileage of greenways than does the town. And because we're, we, we kind of tie into both city uh, trails and um, county trails, uh, we feel like it'd be best to kind of see how those two larger localities um, intend to handle this and then we can follow suit um, if, if they take any action at all. Uh, the first one to have any uh, conversation about this uh, to date has been the city of Roanoke. They had a work session with council yesterday. Um, not sure if it made the paper today or not, but um, I did speak with Michael Clark, Director of Parks and Recreation and, and Liz Belcher uh, with the Greenway Commission. And there was some uh, quite a bit of discussion back and forth, but no real consensus on which direction to go. And they did uh, schedule a public hearing, uh, I believe, let me see if I have that date. Um, I believe it's the 25th, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize, I had that in my head, but uh, it's, it's coming up here in the near, near future. They'll have a public hearing in the city of Roanoke. And I think that will give us some kind of direction to, that we can consider whether we want to prohibit those e-bikes um, or if we want to allow them to be treated as a typical bike. Um, and uh, unless you have any questions, that's really just wanted to kind of give you an inclination that we were monitoring this and we were following this. Um, and we are in consultation with the Greenway Commission and our counterparts in the county and city. Uh, and like I said, I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that information. Uh, Pete, you were showing us your assistant earlier, so maybe the dog gate your paper that had the dates and everything on it. <laughs> I, believe it's, I believe it's June 25th they scheduled a public hearing, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we'll, we'll know more about the city's intentions. And they they have the largest, um, <clears throat> they are the owners of the largest portion of paved greenway, obviously. So uh, that will give us a really good indication of how we may want to address it in the future. Sure. Okay, thank you very much for that information. Jan, oh, can you hear me? We're not hearing you. Pardon me? Janet wanted to speak, but we're not getting any sound from her. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. We can. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor and, and Pete, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, this is, this is going to be quite an issue, I think, on the Greenways. There's a lot of merit for e-bikes in terms of the um, disabled um, using e-bikes on the greenways, but there is a lot of concern about the speed. These e-bikes can go 20 to 25 miles an hour. And if you can imagine walking on Wolf Creek Greenway and an e-bike going by you at 20, 25 miles an hour, it's, um, it can be a concern. So I think we're, I, I agree with Pete. I think we're just going to have to see how this goes forward, but um, it's something, something to think about. Yeah. Yes, I would agree. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may say one more thing, there, there has been some discussion on the Greenway Commission and amongst the other jurisdictions that if the e-bikes are, are, if the legislation goes into effect and e-bikes are allowed, at least maybe class one or class two, um, which are the, the least aggressive bike, I, I guess you could say, um, that there may be some uh, discussion about putting a speed limit in place on the greenways as a means to somewhat regulate um, the aspects that Ms. Shah just mentioned. 
um, that is an enforcement issue, but, but, you know, if we prohibit e-bikes, that's an enforcement issue either, uh, I also. So either way, there, there are going to have to be some oversight, uh, but there are some discussions in, there has been discussions actually about the speed limit prior to e-bike legislation, but I think this is going to, uh, re, re, uh, reintroduce that discussion and we'll see where that heads. Exactly. And, and I think the, Mr. Peters hit the nail on the head. The question is enforcement. Who is going to be out on the greenway enforcing that speed line? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the situation we're going to have to monitor and just see how it goes. Uh, in the other localities, it's, uh, Interesting. Uh, all right, Pete, uh, thank you very much. For that. Yes, sir. If, uh, if I could, not on this subject, but it's actually on the subject of the Greenway, uh, and uh, maybe it's just a question, and maybe Janet, you would know. Um, and uh, but I've had a few citizens that walk, um, you know, from our neighborhood down to the Wolf Creek Greenway um, with their animals um, quite regularly, and um, have expressed to me about maybe getting some um, some lights down there at the behind the, the uh, former beauty salon there. Um, evidently there is some um, some nighttime activity that goes on down there um, and some unwanted trash left behind uh, that uh, is inappropriate and was wondering I know that the chief has started to um, patrol that area um, from what I understand but I was just curious about how would who does that, Janet? Um, would, would that be the town? Would that be like the Greenway Commission? Or, or is that even something that um, they even consider? That would be the town. Um, the Greenway, as far as I know, is closed at dusk. So there should not be people out there at night. If there are, then that I think is a police matter. Um, the Greenway Commission has no enforcement ability. Okay, thank you. So what you're saying is that there's some activity going on in the parking lot there. I believe so, right at the trailhead. Uh-huh, right. Um, so just, uh, I've had more, a few citizens stop mm -hmm. and talk to me about it and uh, mm -hmm. was wondering how we put a light up there. And, you know, I was just honest with them and said, you know, I'm not sure if it's the Greenway Commission or if that's the town or, right. or what. So I thought this would be the appropriate venue to ask. Right, I think that's probably a town police issue. Great. Yeah, I know the chief is on top of it, um, so hopefully we won't uh, hear those comments in the future. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. All right, thank you, sir. So, um, Mr. Major, do you have any other comments or updates? No, that, that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay, and Pete, thank you very much for that report. And with that, we will move on. I don't see anything listed for reports from our committees. So uh, we'll talk about the appointments to our uh, boards and commissions. And, uh, councilors, uh, you know, we uh, do have a couple of positions uh, on the planning commission that we need to discuss. Our vice mayor's uh, term uh, expires on uh, June 6th, uh, 2020. And I understand that Mr. Lyles is interested in being reappointed. So that next term would run through June 6, 2024. And uh, also, uh, Mr. Patterson resigned uh, from the Planning Commission actually before he passed away. He resigned uh, November 12th. And uh, we have an application from Andrew Ty Braxton. Uh, he's filled out his. Uh, application and says that he is interested in uh, filling that position. And if appointed, uh, that term would run through uh, June 1, 2024. Uh, Council, you have any, uh, any other nominations or any discussion concerning these uh, nominees? We'd have to watch that vice mayor guy, but I believe they're good nominees. Might be some discussion about the nominees, especially <laughs> the first one, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> concerned, man. That's right. All right. No, I, actually, have planned it, I planned it all out for the next 40 years. It's all planned out. You planned it all out. Yeah, we know what, what can happen to plans sometimes. Actually, I think we're 40. fortunate to have two qualified uh, gentlemen to uh, 
uh, serve on a planning commission. So uh, if there's no further discussion, you know, uh, entertain a motion to uh, uh, to nominate these two gentlemen for the uh, position, actually to elect them for the position. I'll make uh, a motion to elect these two gentlemen for the positions. I'll second it. Okay, I believe that was a motion by uh, Council Member McCarty and a second by Council Member Stovall. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess we can do that on Zoom. Uh, all right, folks, thank you very much for that. And uh, just a very few brief comments uh, tonight on the mayor section. I heard that cheer, by the way. Uh, uh, but I, I just want to once again thank everyone, uh, certainly our town staff and, and town council for their continued hard work. Uh, I know that these are challenging times and it seems like uh, it takes a little more effort to get things done these days. I know I've been working from home a couple of months and it, it, it just takes a lot of effort, uh, about twice as much work to do the same amount or twice as much effort to get the same amount of work done. So uh, we know things are uh, tricky and difficult. And by the way, Mr. Major, I was very happy to hear that the uh, building is going to reopen. And I was particularly uh, happy to hear that uh, you're making such an effort to have it professionally cleaned so that the uh, public can be assured that uh, uh, they'll be as safe as possible when they return to the building. So just want to thank everyone uh, for the hard work. I uh, also would like to say uh, that I appreciate the effort that our neighbors and our citizens have been uh, making um, our, and thank them for really stepping up. And we've recognized our uh, high school graduates and even in addition to recognize folks that uh, have moved up uh, in the other grades from the elementary schools as they continue their academic careers. And uh, it's really good uh, to see that uh, a small town uh, effort uh, being made to let folks know that they are being uh, recognized and appreciated. So I think our town has done a, a really good job in that. We've, uh, we've seen some really, uh, really great, really uh, unique parades. And uh, one last thing, just uh, briefly. Um, generally on uh, Vinton Town Council, we uh, try to stay away from uh, uh, national state politics. And I think we should, you know, our, our uh, council handles the business of the town and I think that's appropriate. Uh, so I won't go into anything in detail, but I'll, I just want to simply ask uh, all of our citizens uh, council members, actually all of our citizens, to uh, earnestly and uh, and to pray earnestly and, and without ceasing for our country. I, we have several things going on right now that, uh, uh, that I think that can only be solved by prayer. So I would call upon uh, all of our citizens uh, to pray about the things going on in our nation at this time. And uh, with that, uh, we will uh, turn it over to uh, the council for comments. Uh, Vice Mayor, you have anything further this evening? Uh, yeah, just a few things, Mayor. Um, and great job on the budget. Uh, again, I know we said that last time. I know that it's been going back and forth. And like the mayor said, it's um, a year long process. Um, but as always, you and staff did a fabulous job on the budget. And uh, especially in these times that we're experiencing. And um, I don't think that. Uh, that we are in too bad a shape, um, considering the, the situations that we found ourselves in and uh, just phenomenal job. And uh, I know that we will be back to where we were in no time once uh, COVID-19 is over. Um, so just very proud of our staff and uh, the way that we all adjust to get things done and, uh, and with not eliminating um, a lot of the services to our citizens. Um, another thing on just on a Personal note, um, speaking of the budget, after um, a budget meeting, I was uh, at the spare of the moment. Uh, our assistant town manager, Pete, um, took time out of his day on a spare moment uh, or at a moment's notice and uh, took me on a tour of the mill uh, with the, um, the new plans for Gish's mill. And, uh, and then after that, we went down to um, 
Benton Motors, our vineyard station, and uh, this the just in awe of how that that building has been transformed into um, what it's going to be a, a really cool uh, addition to our downtown. Uh, it's going to look totally different and uh, be a, a great asset to our citizens um, and our downtown. So just uh, really excited to see it. it. Every time I go by there, it's changed uh, a little bit more and coming together. Um, just <coughs> To have a vision like, like that, uh, that that crew has done to transform that is amazing. Um, and last, uh, I was just, you were talking about the town and how we did with uh, graduations for our 2020 graduates. Um, just yesterday, I was here uh, working from home and I heard um, a lot of police sirens. Um, however, they weren't really sirens. They were just um, beep, beeping sirens, kind of. And uh, the dogs started going crazy and I looked out the window and it was uh, our finest Benton PD leading uh, the teachers parade around the whole town of Benton and all of through Roanoke County for Absolutely. Um, all of our the teachers to go visit their students uh, or all the graduates. Uh, I just thought that was really back to that small hometown feel that you were talking about. Um, that's what it's all about. And uh, for them to take the time out of their day uh, to, to do that, um, from what I hear, there's a lot of great feedback from not only the teachers, but the students and the police department. I think the police department enjoyed it the most. So um, what a wonderful town that we live in. Agreed. All right, thank you for those comments. I certainly agree with all of them. Good job. Uh, and with that, we'll move to uh, Council Member McCarty. you have anything further this evening? Yeah, I just want to, um, you know, once again, say thanks to Chastity for, you know, the good things that I know will be happening at the farmer's market soon. Looking forward to COVID-19 going away so that we can get our Chamber of Commerce back in gear and get the mingle at the markets and everything going on and have the fun buzz that we we have had in the town for the last several years to come back into play. Uh, I want to thank Ann and uh, the manager and assistant manager and all that was involved with the budget. Um, you had a very big task before you and uh, just wanted to reiterate, you know, what you had said about even though you may look at the chart and it says that it's eliminating something that we really have, we have not eliminated any jobs. We've just been able to do a very good job of um, structuring it a little differently. So thank you for that. I know that folks had, you know, questions about that. So I appreciate that. Um, I did have one question for Pete. Um, could you give us an update on Billy Bird and maybe the activity there as far as uh, the apartments rented? Uh, someone had asked me that the other day and I didn't have a firm number to give them. They are at approximately 50% occupied. Okay. And the, the owner is very pleased considering the economic environment we're in. He's, he's very happy with that number. Yeah. And I'm sure with um, what Vice Mayor Lyle said, with all the activity that's going on at the mill and at uh, Vent Motors, that that'll just increase, you know, uh, lots of activity going on down there. So that's exciting as well. Um, I want to thank uh, town manager for keeping us informed the last couple of days of uh, some unfortunate things that were going on and that the police department um, did what we could do so that Venton could um, do our part in that. And uh, I appreciate you keeping us informed, Barry. And I don't think Chief Foster's here tonight, but um, him as well. Uh, it was, it's a very scary time. So prayers for safety for everyone, but thanks for our police department once again, stepping up and uh, doing what was needed. And that's all, oh, Keith, I hope your mother-in-law's doing better. Thank you. Um, Lisa had indicated that she was having some issues. So she's been in my prayers. I hope she's doing oh, okay. better. Mm -hmm. We'll find that's out all. more tomorrow. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, Sabrina, for those comments. And with that, we'll move to Council Member Shy. Do you have anything further? I don't. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Snowball, you're next on the list. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I, I first off want to just take my hat off to every employee with the town of Benton. When you're in the midst of a pandemic, naturally you look at, at the numbers, there's over 35 million people in this country that's lost their jobs. And, and the list is long as far as the budget is concerned. And the first comment out of the mouth, out of her mouth of the finance director is, all current employees will remain employed. You know, that says a lot. I mean, I know people talk about government, but then from there, we have all the department heads that do their part to, to help us get through this. You know, the lost revenue that we have, uh, the vice mayor made a great point when he talked about temporary. Right now, it's temporary compared to being permanent. So I know we're going to get to the end of the budget. We're all going to vote. and We're going to naturally make these comments again. But congratulations to every single employee from the town manager who leads this organization as a CEO to everybody. Thank you very much. I mean, the insurance. So once again, I want to thank you for that. Um, Echoing what the vice mayor said, uh, as you know, um, I mean, I've got two acres of land and, and I have a tractor that I ride. And I was riding it the other day and I heard all this noise. And um, so I look up and coming in to the uh, interest of the meadows going down actually to the end where um, council member uh, McCarty lives was the B the bee parade from Herman L. Horn. And, you know, the most the, the most mesmerizing thing about it was. Because when I came up beside my house, I stopped right there, led by the police department. It was like the respect that funerals get. Everybody stopped in the roads, the intersections, big, pretty big intersection uh, right here uh, at the Meadows and Mountain View. Everybody stopped and let, let all the teachers go through. They all were waving. Everybody was excited. So, you know, that that's truly, back to what the vice mayor said, that's truly um, – a, a community that believes in their people and believes in everything that, that they believe in. So, you know, it's just, it's just great during these times to see everything. I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, about praying for the situations that are bigger than the town of Benton, but you know, we'll get through all this, but anyway, thank you. And those are my comments. All right. Thank you, sir. And I certainly agree with those comments too. Uh, uh, despite everything, despite the difficulties we're going through right now, this, uh, this town, the town of Benton is still a great place to live. And I'm, I'm just thankful that I live here. So, and uh, thankful for our citizens. We, we've got a great place. Okay, is there anything further to, to come before council this evening? Can I ask one question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Barry, is that all municipal or all town buildings are going to open the 22nd or just the municipal building? Well, uh, we're there will be some uh, scheduling uh, at the War Memorial and the, uh, um, uh, the I call it senior building, the community building. Uh, that will be a little different than uh, our other buildings, but um, the municipal building will be open to the public that day. So. Thank you. Okay, and that's June 22nd, right? Yes. Okay. Anything further for council's consideration this evening? If not, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. No, let's, just, let's just all sit here and look at Zoom all night. <laughs> no one wants to adjourn. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all come on over to the birthday party then if you don't want to adjourn. <laughs> I think I heard a motion from the vice mayor. I'll, I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay, and a second. All in favor signify by turning off their computers. All right. Thank you, Good folks. night, Stop everyone. Good night.